Yeah, that's right. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way with a nice solid tap on the butt. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty hungover, but hopefully nobody will notice. Also, my butt hurts, so it kind of hurt when I got tapped on it. I'm not, I don't remember why. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late, which is actually pretty damn good for me. <laughs> Honestly. Not realistic. Was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, I'm not from America, so I use the word youth. Do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Oh. <laughs> Go on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Get your hands out of that fidget spinner, or whatever it is you kids do these days, and help a dad out. Duh! Huh? Mr. Vega! Dipshit! What are you, high? Uh, have you tried leaving the school m right away? Go upstairs. Get out. Get out of my face, ugly piece of shit. You stupid old piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I head up the stairs and walk around. Unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. That fucking shithead lied to me! Motherfucker! I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Butler is standing. Cause that's the only Gerard that I know. What about ready. Gerard Depardieu? Who's that? Dog do? Gerard Dep Dog Gerard Dog do. Dog do do. Fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Hmm? Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Da. Fine. Uh. Wow. Turns out I accidentally asked one of the special needs kids <laughs> for directions. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. Which is a reasonable amount of time for me to be late. You must be Emery Daddy. This period's almost over. Would you, uh, mind waiting until next month? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> get it? Uh, that was a joke, because I don't know what it would... Uh, you you know, actually, males do get periods, I heard. No, they can produce milk from their nipples, though. And yeah. blood from their genitals. With the, if you have a razor blade. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat at one of the comically small students' desks in the back. We have fun talking about weird human anatomy factoids. Ah. There's nothing weird about it, Emery Daddy. A quick razor blade slice to the balls will create a large quantity of blood. Mm. Trust me. Okay. Anyway, where were we? Okay, balls. Hmm. Colin? Balls? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his butt crack and make a fart noise. Ah. The whole class erupts in laughter. A doy hoy hoy hoy. Hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, everybody. Very funny, you fucking idiot, scum, shithead, cock. They should call him Cocklin, right? Oh. Now, farts are funny in some situations, but not in a classroom where I'm trying to teach you about cutting balls. <laughs> The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the do door, looking back at Mr. Hugo with concern in their eyes. Sweet man. Remember to slice your genitals open and collect the blood. Bring it to class next time. <laughs> Nobody's listening. <laughs> They've heard this a million times before. God, what is with young people these days? Nobody willing to bleed themselves for class. Middle schoolers, um, M-I-R-I-T-E. Oh my god, these kids are in middle school? That dude had, like, multiple piercings. What the fuck? Don't you teach high schoolers? Well, he was special ed, obviously. But, you know, yeah, I teach all ages. You know, uh, ball cuts. Right. I mean, budget cuts. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for coming in. Yeah, no problem, uh, Mr. Ball Cutting Man. Uh, you can just call me Ball Cutty. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ball Cuddy. Mr. Ball Cuddy. Okay. Mr. Ball Cuddy. A lot of people think that when you cut balls, like white stuff's gonna come out, but that's not how it works. It's just blood. Huh. Okay, <laughs> what's this have to do with Amanda, by the way? Oh, uh, Amanda. Well, she's never been the most mm, engorged of a student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been failing. The problem is she doesn't have balls, so she has nothing to cut. Girls just don't have anything to cut down there. It's already kind of cut. <laughs> this is really weird. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. She's never mentioned me the fact that she doesn't have balls. Something might be wrong. <laughs> I, I just got to ask this. Is everything okay at home? I mean, does she have balls at home? Is she holding out? <laughs> well, she does have a tendency to bottle things up and keep them on shelves. Maybe she's got a pair of balls in a bottle somewhere. 
Oh. But yeah, she might have balls in a in a bottle somewhere. You should <laughs> you should definitely look around the house. Maybe ask her about it. Um, but if she's got balls anywhere, she needs to start, you know, running these tests that I've asked her to test. Or maybe slice your balls. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make sure to talk to her about it. Uh, thanks for letting me know, Hugo. I'm please, glad. please, Mr. Ballcutty. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Ballcutty, but uh, I, 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 I just, I don't think I'm going to be letting her cut my balls. Anyways, uh, uh, nice to meet you. Anytime. Uh, just make sure she puts the blood in uh, the proper container. Okay. On my way out, I stop. Thinking for a moment, I turn to Mr. Balcutty. Hey, Mr. Balcutty. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, tell you what, just call me Mr. B. It's okay. shorter. All right, so uh, did they ever... No, no, actually, no, you should call me Mr. Balcutty. No, I changed my mind. What do you do with all the ball blood? Ah. Well, um, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I leave the classroom in bewilderment and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda doesn't have balls. I mean, she's got the word man in her name. She's a man, duh. <laughs> and that's something about her mother. Well, yada yada. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I could talk to her about her lack of balls. Eh? I pull up to the carpool and a man hops in the passenger seat. Hey, did you have fun talking to Mr. Ballcutty about me? Uh, Mr. Ballcutty and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you just talked about Zach Galifianakis the whole time? That hairy, obese guy? Hey, you know I'm into men who look like me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, let's not talk about it anymore. I don't want to spoil my appetite. Sure thing. <laughs> Let's go to the mall food court. I heard they have an Arby's slash KFC there. So I can get an extra crispy meat mountain. Double down style. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Uh, not really. <laughs> In fact, it sounds like child abuse. Jeez. Can't a dad take his daughter to the mall and stuff a fried 10,000 calorie sandwich down her throat? Yeah, I guess. Will you like buy me stuff? I will buy you a thing, a meat mountain. That does not sound like a good deal. Dad, seriously, I, I've been sucking horse dicks all day. We drive in silence for a short while. I know that she doesn't suck horse dicks at school. She's been lying to me this whole time. Instead, she's been avoiding slicing her balls. What other secrets has she been keeping from me? I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And, you know, that's okay, because... Sometimes that's just what kids do, you know, and, and like I said, that's okay But also sometimes it's good to have the parents perspective because you know dad. I have balls. Okay, don't interrupt me And maybe you know the parents are a little cooler than you give them credit for and maybe they've dealt with the whole like not having balls Situation before so anyways, you know, I'm just trying to say that it's good to share and I love you Have you been reading my tweets about how I have balls? You have balls? Hmm? What never mind God. <laughs> I shouldn't tell you these things. Look, sweetie, Mr. Ballcutty said you haven't been slicing your balls in class, and that you don't actually have balls. Oh, I do have balls. Or at least, I like to pretend I do. Oh god, he's such an old fuck, Dad. He doesn't know anything about modern genders. But I thought you liked his class. You always talk about how great it is, and how many horse dicks you get to milk. No, I like his ass, not his class. Ah. Uh, we pull up to a stoplight, and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. Well, nah, that's quite frustrating. <clears throat> so I heard that one of your dumb friends is going to that stupid art school in California. That's exciting. <laughs> Not. Good one, Dad. <laughs> yeah, are you bummed that you can't go to the same stupid art school and you have to go to a real school? <laughs> yeah, I actually, I'm really bummed. <laughs> she keeps texting. She stifles a sniffling cry. Who you texting? Noah. Why, uh, whoa! Who the fuck is Noah? He's just my friend. He's the guy whose balls I've been borrowing. What? Does he go to your school? No. Mm -hmm. Uh. Noah. Do you like Noah? Huh? What? No. 
He's my balls coach. <laughs> He's teaching me what it's like to have balls. Oh, God, I can't believe you thought I was interested in him. Uh. I'm just learning about balls from him, Dad. He lets me touch him, and then learn what it's like, and so now I can act like I have him. Sorry, sorry, holy shit. I was just asking. <laughs> wow. God, he's just a ball coach. Guys and girls can be ball coaches, Dad. And I'm teaching him what it's like to have boobs. Because he wants boobs. Okay, okay. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leads... <laughs> She leads forward and lets out a huge wet one. I guess that conversation is over. Time to bask in the stank. <laughs> we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. You know, those things that human beings have. It's kind of dead like all malls in 2017, but that doesn't stop the mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering youths. <laughs> Let's eat something really gross for dinner, like fucking Korean food or something. <laughs> yeah, good idea. It's, anything's better than that horrible child abuse mountain meat. Language, meat. Missy! How <laughs> dare you disrespect the meat mountain! Uh, uh, all praise the meat mountain. Better. <laughs> we approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's Arby's after Arby's. My heart burns just looking at the menus, but then again, it burns pretty much all the time. Nobody looks happy to be here, except for me! What are you in the mood for? 12 inches of meat stacked on top of other meat? <laughs> or do you just want me to stick some lard straight up your ass, Dad? <laughs> I extend my ass to her. Would you do me the honor of injecting some nachos? <laughs> she grabs my ass with a grin. Uh, uh, it would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive, Dad. <laughs> I smack Amanda. We order a giant pile of unnaturally orange meat from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. Take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Also curly fries. Hey. This is bad. This is orange. This is orange meat. <laughs> but also orangely delicious. Orange you glad we came here? Oh god. I'm just gonna have to eat through the puns. <laughs> I enjoy the fluorescent meaty goodness together until we're all out of meat mountains. Oh, oh, so something's been bothering me for a while, deep down in my guts. <laughs> hey, I'm uh, I need a distraction from my bowel pains. Can you explain memes to me hmm. while I work through this? Ah, uh, which meme? All. Oh. All memes, like the poop emoji, that's a meme, right? How about sad Keanu? Can you explain that one to me? Ugh. Ugh, <laughs> oh, like this? <laughs> she sighs deeply and places her head in her hands, imitating the sad Keanu meme. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Dad, memes are simple. They're funny for, like, a day, Dad. The first time someone sees a meme, it becomes unfunny. They expire in seconds. By the time you see a meme, it's already five years old. Oh, shit. What, what are you talking about? Ugh. Oh, Dad. Can't you at least wait till you get in the bathroom? Anyway, <laughs> changing the subject. You said you were going to buy me something, bitch. Uh, you want to go to that goth store? We can make fun of the goth kids? Huh? Goth? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. Oh, uh... <laughs> you know, it's the one where you can buy chain wallets and they still have fucking Invader Zim shirts and shit. Oh, and they have, like, t fucking tons of Nirvana stuff, even though I guarantee none of... Nobody who shops there can name any of the members of Nirvana other than Kurt Cobain. You know, that store. Hmm. Kurt who? Do you mean <laughs> Steve Cobain? And Bob Grohl? Remember that store that you threw up in that one time? Oh, you mean the one that you went in the dressing room in and shit in? Exactly. And that's what made me vomit? Exactly. Yeah. I, I like to get a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas paraphernalia and take shits all over it and put it back on the shelves. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> Amanda runs to the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. She really takes advantage of the fact that I can barely walk, much less run. <laughs> there it is! The shit that you took! It hasn't been cleaned up! Oh! I'm so proud! They've just, like, cordoned the area off. And put, like, you know, put some newspaper over it and that yellow police tape around it. God. Great. Oh, Dad. Speech. Please. Okay, speech. Okay. Speech. Amanda. Speech. 
Speech! Speech! Hey. All right, all right. I'll shit, do it speech, if you stop shit, speech. Speech. Sit. Okay. Oh. Amanda stops immediately. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape fecal history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago in 2012, our very own Emery Daddy, that's me, had too many brand new Doritos Locos Tacos from Taco Bell on an outing to the mall. Yeah! After my daughter Amanda begged me to take her to Dead Goth and Beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, I proceeded to shit all over a display of Nightmare Before Christmas merchandise. <laughs> because everywhere you go in Dead Goth and Beyond, there's Nightmare Before Christmas shit. It's, it's barely even a good movie. Yay! I then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains in the store, cordoned off in its own special area. Thank you. <laughs> Amanda is moved to tears. She begins sobbing, slow and clapping. <laughs> Slowly at first, then faster and more vigorously. <laughs> Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also pinches their nose in disgust. I blow my head. <laughs> That's what blowing your head sounds like. Dad, I imitated the Shia LaBeouf meme for you. I don't know what it means, our bitch. Remember? While well, Amanda busies herself looking at looking at Bob Grohl t-shirts and <laughs> Steve, what was Steve Cobain? Steve Cobain wristbands. I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at and dead goth and beyond. Maybe I should have gone to dad guns and beyond. Dad guns and the great beyond. <laughs> and the great beyond, yeah. Um, hmm. Ooh, Look hot deals at a clearance bin. That sounds like something a dad would do. Yeah, he's, uh, dads are always looking for hot deals. Hell yeah. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 for purple eyeliner is a good deal, I think. I wonder how I would look in purple eyeliner. <laughs> it's called guy liner, dude. Hell yeah. I would look fucking fantastic. Look, this is very important to me. <laughs> I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An old vampire in the Seinfeld poofy shirt is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. Oh, I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work what? now. Listen, when I held this online, it said this was Victorian, but it's clearly Edwardian. Uh, I don't want it. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. You leave, I give you Shut a the coupon. fuck up. Shut up. Is there a manager? People should know what they're doing in this store. God damn it. I just wish I was back in Castlevania again. Uh, I am the manager. Oh, no. Well, you're stupid. I'm going to write a letter. I'm going to write a really nasty letter to you. Good day, shopkeep. Whatever, dude. Go back to EverQuest. <laughs> Wait, that's a reference from way too long ago. No, don't get it. The clearly gay vampire man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian or Edwardian in nature. Because that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh, boy. Here it comes. Oh. Hey, what's up, robot father? <laughs> yes. I'll buy it for you. <laughs> that was easier than masturbating a horse. Thanks, Dad. No problem. Please insert kiss on Daddy's cheek. <coughs> Daughter. <laughs> oh, gross. You smell like fish. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier, her lips covered in my face grease. <laughs> Ooh, I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So, what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something, like an eye muscle. That's Damien. He's in here all the time, returning stuff. He's obsessed with Vicarian and fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over because she starts frothing at the mouth and convulsing on the ground, probably overdosing. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Not alerting any authorities. Can we stop at Hot Topic next? 